YouTube, it's Daniel the Rocket Noob, and we are back building the Quest Superbird model rocket. And good news, I have figured out the problem with my centering rings. If you remember from the last video, the centering rings that came with this kit were in fact way too small for the rocket. It appears as though uh, somehow the 30 millimeter centering rings for some completely different kit got packed in instead of the 35 millimeter rings that are required for the Superbird. Now, I talked about the fact that I might have to um, either contact Quest and uh, get them to send me some uh, the correct centering rings, which would take a little bit of time. I might have to try and make my own, um, or I might have to t take some larger centering rings, which are not quite large enough for this rocket, and somehow build them up with paper or what have you. Well, I'll tell you what I figured out. Okay, so when we in video one, you remember we talked about the fact that this tube is ever so slightly larger than an Estes BT-56 tube, uh, which you find in, in a lot of uh, easy-to-fly kits or easy-to-build kits. And the BT-56 is ever so slightly larger than the BT-55, even though all three of these look exactly the same to the eye. This is a little larger than this. This is a little bit bigger than this. Here's the great part. The BT-55 fits perfectly inside the Quest tube. So what does this mean? This means that I can use these centering rings, which are technically supposed to be for a BT-56. They are a little small for that, but they fit just perfectly inside the BT-55. I can glue those in there like that. I can cut out this little section here, and then uh, that basically widens the centering rings, and then everything will fit inside here. All right, so I'm not going to stick this whole uh, this whole tube in here. I'm just going to cut off about um, I'm going to say that's about a quarter of an inch uh, of tube, and um, that'll shim up the centering rings. This also means that I can make my own tube coupler out of paper, and I can get rid of this black plastic tube coupler, which I was never really crazy about in the first place. I don't like this um, this little extra launch lug bit. It's just going to stick out and not really a purpose for it. And also, uh, I don't have to use some kind of special glue. I don't have to use plastic cement or CA or super glue to glue the coupler into the rocket. I can just cut a bit of coupler uh, and, uh, and, and I've got a coupler for the actual rocket. Um, it does mean that I'll have to cut my own bulkhead because you remember this plastic disc fits right into that coupler and I was going to cover something, cover this hole up with a paper disc or something. It doesn't, it's a little loose on here. Um, again, I don't really want to have to fiddle with gluing that. So I'm going to have to make my own bulkhead, which is basically a solid piece that separates the ejection charge from the payload tube. And that's not really that hard. This is a payload tube that I made uh, for a rocket that I'm building, which is basically a copy or a clone of the uh, Estes High Flyer XL. And I just put a coupler right here and I made this uh, bulkhead and that's a piece of basswood and there's a disc of balsa wood on the inside. Fits right in there. You, set, you cut it to the right size uh, and then you sand it down so that it fits nicely inside the rocket and you've got a nice little payload tube. Um, so that is what we'll be doing. This also means that because these centering rings are for a 24 millimeter tube, what I can do is I can cut a fresh motor tube out of a BT-50, and that is the right size for a 24 millimeter motor, and I can upgrade this rocket to a D-powered rocket, which I think is what I talked about in the first or maybe the second video. Um, because of that, I am gonna have to now make a simulation of this, because when you put a heavier motor in the rocket than the rocket was designed for, that shifts the center of gravity aftward. And you want to make sure that your center of pressure is behind your center of gravity by at least one caliber. And caliber refers to the diameter of the tube. So this is a 35 millimeter tube. So if the center of pressure is here on the rocket, the center of gravity has to be at least 35 millimeters ahead of it. And with a long rocket like this, that's probably not going to be a problem. I probably could just go ahead and build it as a D rocket, but you always want to make sure when you are altering a kit, um, if you're 
doing it, uh, if you're building it uh, other than according to the instructions, you want to make sure that you, you double check that. Besides which, I kind of want to see what the difference is going to be between a C motor and a D motor. And I'm also curious, uh, do I have enough stability in this rocket where I could uh, use, uh, say, an E9 black powder motor, which is longer and heavier and has a longer burn time. I really like those motors. Um, I probably won't do that. I'll probably just keep it simple and uh, fly it on Ds. But if I build a sim and I know where the center of pressure is and I know where the center of gravity should be, then I can see what those different motors are going to do that is to the stability of the rocket. And I might even be able to fly it on composite motors. I don't want to go too crazy. I mean, this rocket's not meant to be a high, high speed or high flying rocket. Um, I wouldn't want to tear it apart, but it's nice to know that at least I have options. I anticipated this being a rather simple, straightforward model rocket building video, and it's gotten a little more complicated than that. But that's okay, because I think it makes it more interesting. Most kits you build are going to be pretty straightforward. You follow the instructions, you're not going to have a problem. You're going to get a nice rocket out of it. Every now and then you encounter a weird problem. You find that there's a little bit of tweaking that needs to be done, a little bit of creative problem solving. Or maybe you want to do something a little differently to what the instructions tell you. And you have to figure out a way around that. Creative problem solving is one of the things that I think uh, is really rewarded in, uh, in, in rocketry and it makes it more interesting and more fun. So I think the next step uh, in this series is we're going to go ahead and cut ourselves a bit of coupler from here and also cut ourselves a couple of uh, short say quarter inch long bits of tube so that we can shim up those centering rings and then we will move on to the motor mount and then we're really in business building the quest superbird all right see you next time